Hallelujah. We speak so many times of death and going to the graveyard as being a finality. Mm -hmm. When in all honesty, it's just the beginning. Yes. yes. Bless him, Lord. When we drop the cross Praise of self-denial. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. Just the beginning. Bless him, Lord. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. We are here. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, Jesus. Jesus. Bless the Lord. Second Samuel in chapter 9. I only want to read one small verse of scripture this morning, but I ask that you all would pray for me that the Lord would anoint me to preach. Amen. It takes him to do the preaching. Yes. And I believe that if we'll yield ourselves to him. He'll make ways for us, don't you? Amen. I've preached on this before. I don't know if I've ever preached on this here before, but I have preached along these lines before, so if you've heard me preach along these lines, bear with me. I'm following the leading of the Holy Ghost this morning. Second Samuel chapter 9 and verse 13. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table. Somebody say the king's table. The king's table. And was lame on both of his feet. I'm going to read that one more time. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem. For he did eat continually at the king's table. And was lame on both of his feet. I want to speak to you for just a minute and preach this morning. If God will allow me and anoint me to preach on this subject. What's under the table stays under the table. What's under, or if you want to title it like this, it'd be fine. If it's under the table, leave it there. <laughs> if it's under the table, leave it there. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you right now, God, and we ask, Lord, that you would anoint my lips of clay in this house this morning. God, we know that you're able, and we know that you are the God that gives all understanding. We know, God, that you are the God that gives the spirit by which we can preach. Now, Lord, I'm asking you this morning, God, to let the preacher show up. Hallelujah. God, move me out of your way this morning, God, and anoint my body. God, anoint me to be your servant, Lord. Put me behind the cross of Calvary, I pray, Lord. God, these people don't need to see me. They don't need to hear me, God. If they don't even remember my name, that's okay, Jesus, as long as they know you. As long as they take you with them, Lord, that's all that matters. Now, God, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to preach me this day, not with enticing words of a man's wisdom, but with a demonstration of power from the Holy Ghost, and we'll never fail to give you the praise in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I think for us to really realize the importance of this verse of Scripture, we first have to realize at the period of time that it is going on in Israel, what it is that's going on at the time that this was written or at the time really that this happened because the Bible is a recorded history of things that have happened. So you've got to understand that the very minute that all of these happenings took place, they didn't actually necessarily take place at the time they were written down, but they were written down later. But what was going on in Israel was it was somewhere in the timeline of between 1010 and 970 B.C. Saul and Jonathan, King Saul and his son Jonathan were dead. David had been anointed king over Judah. Saul's son Ishbosheth had taken over the rest of Israel as king. Then Ishbosheth had been assassinated by his own men. David had taken over Jerusalem, conquered it, and had made it his capital city. And David was now anointed king over the rest of Israel. He had retrieved the Ark of the Covenant from the house of Abinadab. That is very important for you to remember this morning. He had went back to the place where the Spirit and the presence of God had left, and he brought it back into the camp of Israel. And there was a time of peace and prosperity in Israel because they were in the house of God again. They were in the presence of the Lord one more time. And as he stood there, and there was all of this going on, all of these attempts, that had been made by Saul on David's life. You have to remember that Saul and David had a pretty rocky relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and if you'll go back to 1 Samuel 18 and 12, you can see why it is that Saul so hated David and so wanted him dead. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 18 and 12 that Saul was afraid of David. Mm -hmm. Because the Spirit of God had departed 